I've discussed the heavyweights and method acting a lot on this channel, but when it came round to examining the techniques of Mr. Alfredo James Al Pacino, I realised there were elements of his performance that, while mocked or ridiculed by some, are actually masterful examples of method technique. Hello, welcome to Organic Acting. If we're going to discuss Al Pacino and ultimately method acting, we need to be clear on what method acting actually is. Let's have a quick dive. Stanislavski, Russian practitioner, hated the melodrama and overacting he saw around him. You gotta tear me apart, Lisa! He created a system to help actors tap into the truth of a scene and a character, to experience rather than pretend or play act. American practitioners such as Lee Strasberg, Stella Adler and Samford Meisner took the best bits from Stanislavski and made them relevant for 20th century film actors. The era of method was born and took off in popularity. Phew, that was a quick dive. If you're looking for a deeper discussion, I've linked a video above. But back to Pacino. This man has carved out a reputation for playing some of the most intense, intimidating, emotional, yet realistic characters ever put to screen. But what elements of method acting are evident in his work? Stanislavski and method acting requires a mastery of all the tools at an actor's disposal, such as body, mind, emotion, but let's not forget about the importance of voice. Pacino is a master of using voice and volume to treat the audience to a range in dynamics, from soft and quiet. No. You raised me. You're the one who put me through law school. Slow to fast. Now I have come to the crossroads in my life. I always knew what the right path was. Without exception, I knew. Hard and loud. Just tell me that. I'll, I'll settle for it. You know what I mean? I'll buy that. B listen. Give me all you got! Listen. Give me all you got! We never know which way one of his characters will turn, giving his performances an exciting, visceral edge. However, this isn't just a case of Al saying, Hey, sound my bob, get ready, because I'm going to shout the hell out of this next scene just because I can. <laughs> Instead, each of Pacino's choices in volume are based in the reality of the scene and the character. Even Pacino's famous hoo in Scent of a Woman hoo Congratulations. was based on a quirk he found from a real lieutenant colonel he trained with while shooting. A core concept proposed by Sanford Meisner is active listening and responding truthfully in imaginary circumstances, a concept deftly mastered by Pacino. Look at Pacino in this famous scene with De Niro in Heat. Pacino is more than enough to say in the scene, but when he isn't speaking, he is listening, responding to the other character. He isn't dead, lifeless, waiting for his next line. Look at Pacino in The Godfather. Michael Corleone is a character renowned for watching, observing. Through Pacino's mastery of the active listening technique, we can see a character who is constantly planning his next move, waiting for the opportune moment to play his hand. Dialogue, monologue, soliloquy. As an experienced stage performer, Pacino is no stranger to the monologue, the art of delivering a solo speech to other characters. Look at his seductive speech in Devil's Advocate, drawing in the other character as well as the listener and convincing them of the futility of God. Touch, but don't taste. Taste, don't swallow. <laughs> Or even Pacino's inspiring monologue to his team in any given Sunday. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that itch. Pacino's ability to work through a speech, find the purpose, work on its journey, and deliver it effectively through articulation and pace is in evidence throughout his career. We've spoken about other method performers, De Niro, Oldman, Day-Lewis, and their ability to play with extreme physical transformations. But I would argue Pacino doesn't really do this, at least not in the same way. 
Of course, there are exceptions, but Pacino has always avoided the extremes of his method colleagues, preferring instead to concentrate on character and delivery. His use of costume, hair and makeup techniques are without a doubt a throwback to his theatrical days. However, Pacino is not afraid to go the extra mile while playing real life personas, such as Phil Spector. Lee Strasberg was a major supporter of emotion memory or effective memory, or more specifically, of actors recalling moments from their own lives to influence the emotion of the scene. Pacino, a student of Strasberg, is a big supporter of this technique and has adapted it to his own needs in performance. Over the years, I've developed a way of working, which is that's my idea of, 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 of acting anyway. I think everybody develops their own as they go on and experience things. The whole idea of being personal is very important. And effective memory really is thinking of something yeah. that um, brings you to a certain place. This use of effective memory is, in essence, an instant recall device allowing Pacino to tap into raw emotion and bring a sense of truth to the performance that is in line with the given circumstances of the scene and character. Want to see how other performers use the method? Click on one of these videos right here. Like what you've seen? Then please hit that like and subscribe button.